Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. If you're one of the cool kids that's already watched my Lightroom Classic version 10 overview video, then you've already heard me talk a little bit about one of the biggest changes that's coming to Lightroom Classic with this latest release, and that is split toning is no more. It's been replaced with a far more powerful tool and one that is also more in line with industry standards. If you've used Premiere Pro or some other editing tools, you may already be fairly familiar with it, but I wanna take a deep dive here because of course everything's gonna be a little bit different from what you may be seeing in other software solutions you've used. And that new tool, is color grading. If you're already familiar with color wheels and how they work, you may be good to go. But like I said, you might want to stick around because of course there are some unique variations here as well as some shortcuts and tips and tricks that you may be able to apply as you go through your own processing with this new color grading tool. I don't want to bore those of you that did watch the overview video, but I do want to walk through quickly the main key changes you're going to see with this color grading functionality and why it can be so much more powerful than split toning before we take the deeper dive into it. Number one and the most obvious change is you're not really going to be using sliders like you did in the past, it's all color wheel based now. Number two, and probably the biggest difference in terms of sheer functionality is you now have the ability in addition to adjusting color tones on the shadows and highlights, you can also adjust the color tones on your mid ranges, which is brand new to Lightroom. This has never been possible before other than maybe doing some clever stuff with range masking and local adjustments. The third key thing you're going to be able to do here is adjust the blending between the different tonal ranges. So between your shadows, mid tones and highlights, you can actually adjust just how much the color tones you apply blend into one zone or the other on either side of the adjustment you're working on. And then last but certainly not least is you can actually adjust the luminance itself of each color hue adjustment that you apply again, whether it's your shadows, the new mid-tone option or in your highlights. So if you haven't figured it out by now, we've got quite a bit to cover. So let's just jump right over to Lightroom and start going through each of these pieces one by one so that you can start wrapping your head around how to use this new powerful tool within Lightroom Classic. So as we come over here into Lightroom itself and open the new color grading panel within the develop module, of course, the first thing you're going to notice is totally different look from what you're used to with split toning. As I said, the sliders, you're really not going to be using as much, although you still have them available to you, but everything's really going to be driven through these color wheels now, which are far more to me intuitive to use. And they're a little bit quicker and simpler as well. Before we start digging into all of this, I do want to call out the fact that the new color grading tool is 100% backwards compatible with the old split toning tool. So if you've got images and your library where you use split toning that's going to carry over to this new color grading functionality without any kind of issue. Your images are going to look exactly the same. And I'll walk through it a little bit towards the end, but you will be able to still mimic the exact same look and feel of split toning with this color grading feature as well. So let's just walk through the different wheels. So again, in the intro, I mentioned that you now have mid-tone control. So on this default view, you see the main three color wheels all in one view. So you've got your mid-tones, your shadows and your highlights. And then these individual sliders down here are gonna let you adjust the luminosity of each of those color ranges, as I mentioned in the intro. And then on the bottom, as you adjust one specific wheel out of these three, you can play with the blending and the balance for each of them as well. The way I prefer to work in here is you can actually come up to the top here. You can go from the three-way view over to an individual wheel view. So you can see your shadows, your mid-tones, your highlights, and then there's also a global wheel which applies the adjustment globally to the entire image across all tonal ranges, which can be pretty powerful as well because you have the same, of course, hue and saturation adjustments, but also that new luminance slider as well to play with to, again, really dial in these adjustments as you work through. Let's jump over here to our mid-tones wheel and we'll start digging into how to actually use this. So you've got this little dot or circle in the center of the wheel. By moving this around, you're gonna immediately begin to adjust the hue of your adjustment as well as the saturation. So by moving it circularly, you're selecting the different hues and then by dragging it outwards towards the edge or back in towards the center, you're adjusting your actual saturation of the hue you've selected. If you let go of your mouse button as you're in here and then come back and re-click on it, you can see there's a little line here. So now you've got your hue locked in and you're simply adjusting the saturation of that hue. So it gives you a little bit finer control to dial in the saturation piece without worrying about accidentally changing the hue as I just did right Right there. So the way around that as well, once I've got my hue set, I can come in and if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard, that's going to do the same thing, but it's going to lock it so that no matter how much I move my cursor, my mouse around in any direction, I'm only able to change the saturation of the hue I've got selected. Conversely, if I've got my saturation locked in and I just want to be able to adjust the hue without changing the saturation on Windows, you can hold down the control key on Mac. That's going to be your command key. As you hold that down, now you can see it adds that inner ring 
It's locked my saturation, and now all I can change is the hue itself. So I don't have to worry about, again, making accidental adjustments to the saturation level here while I look for the exact hue that I want. If you want to make finer adjustments and slow down the movement, you can hold down the Alt or Option key. Again, Alt on Windows, Option on Mac. As you hold that down, everything's going to move much slower, giving you more exact control, again, over what you're trying to select. If I wanted to reset this, I'm going to double click on the little circle, and it's going to pop it back into the center. So zero hue, zero saturation. Conversely, if you've got any adjustment on here, you can right click, control click on Mac, and that's going to give you some different options. I can reset just the one I'm working on. I can reset the three main wheels, which is going to be your shadows, midtones, and highlights, or I can reset all ranges and completely start over from scratch. If I wanted to copy the settings for a particular wheel to another, you also have the copy settings feature, which would let me take this exact setting I've got here and copy it over, say, to my shadows, my highlights, or even my global. Now, if you've been watching, you may also notice that as I move things around in here, if you watch those hue and saturation slides, sliders below, those are moving back and forth. And that's where this really comes in to be much more powerful and efficient than split toning. Those two sliders are essentially the same as what we've had with the old split toning tool. But now instead of having to adjust each slider individually, just by dragging my mouse around while I hold down the mouse button, it's adjusting both sliders. And again, you can really dial things in nice and easily. You may have also noticed that there's a little colored box down here that represents your current color selection. If you click on that, it actually brings up some standardized color swatches that you can select from as well. So you come in here and say, well, actually, I want more of a blue tone. Just click on that. It's going to change it exactly to that tone on the color wheel itself. And there's also the standard Lightroom eyedropper tool. If you click and hold on that, you can then drag it around to anywhere on the image and actually anywhere on the screen to pick a specific color. So no matter what piece of color is on your screen, I could even come down here to one of my images in the film strip and pull a color out. I could pull out my color flag ratings. So anywhere there's color on the screen, you can use this eyedropper tool to pick it and apply it to your color wheel. Let's close that out. And then the last thing to really call out here within the color wheel itself, let's just get a tone applied that's easy to see. Let's apply a little bit this reddish purple to this image. Once I've got that set, you'll notice there's also this little eye icon on each of the color wheels as you work within the individual color wheel view. You don't have this when you're on the three-way view, but when you're locked into one wheel, you do. If I click and hold on that, it's going to temporarily turn it off. Let go of the mouse button. It's going to turn it back on so you can easily see what you've done exactly in terms of how much of an adjustment you've made to the image for that particular color wheel. So it's different than using the panel toggle switch. If I were to do this, and let's say I had some shadow colors in here also. If I just do the eye tool, it's only gonna turn off that particular wheel. So it's different than the toggle switch where that's gonna turn off the entire panel and take you back to essentially your before state completely before you did any color grading at all. So again, the toggle switch is gonna turn all of it on and off, whereas the eye tool is only gonna turn that particular tonal range that you're working on on that color wheel on and off while you click and hold the mouse. Okay, so let's talk about the blending tool or blending slider a little bit to help you understand how this one's going to work for you as well. So let me, for this one, I'm going to do some quick adjustments here just for the sake of example. I'm going to go with a really strong adjustment on my midtones. Let's go with a strong blue on my shadows and maybe on the greens here, I can come in and apply that to the highlight. So now we've got a pretty garish image, but you're going to be able to see as I click into the individual wheels and start playing with the blending slider, exactly how that's working. So as I pull this left, left to right, and keeping in mind I'm on the shadows wheel right now, I'm telling Lightroom how much I want this color tone to blend into the neighboring tonal ranges. So as I pull this left, I'm telling it I want less blending into the other ranges. So you can see the blues are getting much more defined just to the shadows. If I pull this back over to the right, the blues are gonna blend a little bit more into the midtones and the highlights as I pull further and further right. And you can see the difference that that makes to the overall color grading that I've applied here in general. So again, less blending as you pull to the left, more blending as you pull to the right. There's always a little bit of blending, even if you pull it to zero, but obviously it's very minimal so that you don't have any hard lines between colors, but it really pulls it back dramatically as you go far to the left. And obviously again, far to the right, it's gonna be a very smooth blend and actually change some of the color toning in your other ranges because they're starting to overlap. Double click on that to reset it. If I were to come over to my midtones here, 
we can do the same thing. So if I pull it to the left, there's going to be less blending. So those midtones are going to become more defined. Now it looks like the midtones are also becoming more saturated, but they're really not. It's just that that color is being controlled more within that exact tonal range and not being blended into the other areas as much. And the same thing, I'm spreading them more into the highlights. So you're seeing less of that red impact because it's being feathered out so much. And if you double click it, it's going to take you back to your default of 50. Now let me go back to the three-way section here. Here. Let's reset all three and we'll come into the mid ranges again. We'll do a dramatic strong saturation adjustment and we'll come back into the main individual wheel setting here and let's play with the luminance slider a little bit. So an important thing to note actually, let me just for the sake of discussion here, reset this. You can use the luminance slider even if you don't have any color tones applied. So if I pull it to the left, I'm making the midtones darker. If I'm pulling it to the right, I'm making the midtones brighter. And we'll double click to reset that. The main thing to note here is the luminance slider here is designed specifically to be used as part of the color grading tool. It's not a substitute for the standard luminance tools. Your highlight slider, shadows, whites, blacks, overall exposure that you have in your basic panel as well as in your local adjustments, those are far more sophisticated than what you can do with the luminance sliders here. So if you need to recover blown highlights in a sky and the clouds in the sky, you're going to want to use your highlight slider on either your basic panel, which is going to adjust it globally, or again on your local adjustments. It's going to be much more refined and effective by doing it that way. Due to the intent of the luminance slider here within color grading, the effect moves and shifts as you adjust your blending and balance. So again, it's not going to be tailored for making a global adjustment or even a local adjustment on your image. It's truly tailored and designed to work specifically within the color grading tool. That doesn't mean you can't use it in conjunction with the other ones, but just know that the primary luminance luminance tools are going to be far more effective and robust than what you've got here. So now let's go back up to this wheel. We'll apply a full saturation effect here so that you can see what luminance is doing. So not surprisingly, as you pull the slider to the left, it's going to bring down again those midtones. It's going to darken the reds that I've selected here. As I pull it to the right, it's going to brighten them up. So darken them down brighten them up. Again, it gives you far more control than we ever had with the old split toning tool, and it makes it far easier to really get this color grading on your images correct and exactly where you want it. I absolutely love some of these new features within color grading. Okay, so let's reset this again. We'll double click on the circle and let's go to our global color wheel now. So it's the exact same principle. You've got your little circle or handle inside that you can move around to select your exact grading that you want. Let's say I want to cool this down and give it kind of a moody blue look. You can see as opposed to the other three color wheels, this is applying it universally or globally to the entire image. It's not accounting for any of the different tonal ranges in here. So if I'm applying this blue, it's applying it to every single range within the image equally and consistently across the frame. And again, you've got the same ability to click and hold on the eye to see your before and after so you can see how much of an adjustment you're making. You still have your color swatches that you can choose from as well as that eyedropper tool. And just like shadows, midtones, and highlights, you can also play with the luminance on this global wheel as well to yet again further refine and find the exact grading that you want to apply. Let me once again reset all ranges on here and we'll just jump over to the shadows. One thing I didn't show earlier is as you're working on your refinements, if you come in and once you've got your adjustment made or as you're working on your adjustments. Just like within other areas of Lightroom, if you hold down your Alter Option key on some of the sliders, it's going to help you dial in your setting even better than what you're going to see on screen typically. So if I come to the blending and balance sliders, as I hold down Alt on Windows or Option on Mac, it's going to boost the saturation essentially temporarily to 100%. So again, you can exactly see what your blending slider is doing. As soon as you let go, it's going to just bring it back to what you actually selected and then same thing with balance hold down alter option and as you drag that again it's temporarily boosting that saturation to 100 percent so you can really see exactly what you're doing and the main key here and this is a good segue into some of the recommendations is remember that with most adjustments as you're processing your images less is more make fine adjustments unless you're going for a particular style you generally aren't going to want to make sweeping changes that are overdone or overcooked on your image and just ends up looking kind of garish moving on to other recommendations here you are going to typically want to apply your base edits first get your overall global adjustments dialed in, including your hue, saturation, and luminance in the HSL panel. Get that all dialed in. 
make sure your white balance is correct before you jump over to color grading. It's going to be much more effective in terms of getting your baseline set and your image before you start doing some of these more refined adjustments with the color grading tool. As noted before, also keep in mind that you're still going to have better refinement of luminance controls if you use the global or local adjustment, highlight, shadows, exposure, those sliders outside of color grading. Again, the luminance slider within color grading is designed specifically to be used with this new tool. So it's not a replacement for those other luminance sliders. It can be used in conjunction but they do work a little bit differently. And one of my biggest personal recommendations just in working with coloring in general is your eyes can get so cooked from looking at the image. It's extremely important that you step away, take some time, whether you go make a cup of tea, cup of coffee, watch TV for a little bit. For me, I often will step away even for days or weeks and come back multiple times and continue to tweak and come back with fresh eyes so that you're not looking at an image and you get so attuned to the colors on the image that you start losing sight, no pun intended, of what you're really doing in terms of those color adjustments. It's very easy for your eyes to adapt to the colors you're working on. So it's definitely very important to step away and give your eyes a chance to rest and reset and then come back and continue on working. Another thing to note with the new color grading tool is it only can add saturation. So if you need to reduce saturation on colors in general or specific colors, again, you're gonna wanna use your saturation slider in your basic panel, your HSL tools, and the saturation adjustments for specific colors in there, or again, use a local adjustment to hone in on a specific part of the image where you want to better control your saturation and actually pull some saturation out. You can't do that in color grading. You can only add saturation to the image using the color wheels that we just walked through. And then perhaps the last thing to mention here, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you do want to mimic exactly the old split toning tool, you can do so by setting the blending on the shadows and highlights to 100, and then just disregard everything else, just play with your hue and your saturation levels, and you've got exactly what you had before. Obviously a different look and feel, but it's the same thing for all intents and purposes. However, I think as you get used to the color grading tools, you're really gonna appreciate them and embrace the new functionality that they bring to the table. Now I covered quite a bit there in a relatively quick manner, but there's a lot to take in as you start playing around with color grading. And again, with Lightroom, the beauty of it is play around. You can do whatever you want. Nothing is going to be destructive to your image. You can always recover. I showed you how to reset the color tools or the color grading tools specifically within Lightroom. So play, get in there, treat it as a sandbox, see what you like, see what you don't like. And it's going to vary from image to image as well. Obviously we're working on a black and white here because it's a little bit easier to see some of the color variations and you don't have underlying colors in the image itself that are impacting your hues. So it's gonna work a little bit differently when you're working on a colored image versus a black and white image. But play, play, play. That's always the key with Lightroom to learn. Just go in and play and start seeing what the different tools are doing and you can always back it out. Hopefully you're seeing here just how powerful this new color grading tool can be. If you enjoyed this and you found it helpful, please give the video a thumbs up. While you're at it, subscribe to the channel. That really will help the channel grow so that I can continue to deliver this content to you. If you wanna know when I release new videos, turn on the notifications for the channel. Also, if you've got any questions about this new color grading tool or anything else in the new version of Lightroom, please drop them into the comments below and I'll answer them as quickly as possible for you. Also, I want to just put a shameless plug out there. If you're not following me on Instagram, I've been doing a new video series over there as well using the new Reels feature where I'm dropping out quick 15 to 30 second Lightroom tip videos within there. So check that out. The series is called Lightroom in a Snap. It's an easy way to deliver some little quick tips and tricks to my viewers in a format of other than over here on YouTube. And I would certainly appreciate you checking those out and supporting me there as well. Otherwise, as always, take care everybody and I'll talk to you next time.